Welcome to Straight from the Muzzle, folks, where we are anything but straight. My name is Space. And I'm Bean. And we welcome you guys to do today's show. Still have not been able to figure out how to say that correctly without sputtering. Whatever. <laughs> sputtering. <laughs> sputtering. <laughs> You'll get it. One day I'll get it, yeah. Uh, oh, man. Today's topic is about fursonas. Everything yeah. that encapsulates a fursona how you build it, how you create it, how it represents you, everything fursona. Now, we've done shows like this in the past on YouTube where we were displaying like different fursonas. And this kind of a, uh, I guess, ness, um, <laughs> you're going to have to like use your imagination, but that's kind of like the best part is kind of imagining um the characters maybe I'll, I'll describe my character and i can guarantee you that besides being who knows what my character looks like i can guarantee that every person that listens to this who has not seen my character will imagine it differently and that's the magical part about using your imagination <laughs> and i didn't just steal that from barney it is true oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> i mean for for mm. someone are like the staple of being a furry i don't think i've ever met a furry without a fursona and if they don't then typically it's because they're new and they end up making one pretty quickly uh so it's it's i don't know it's interesting I've seen it like uh, when new when new people enter the fandom or they enter a group and they're not sure yet what they want to be and they're kind of just you know exploring kind of seeing what everyone else does. Typically, I feel they pick like one of the top two to kind of go with. They're like the more they're like your generic Pokemon starters, um, but eventually they kind of get their ground and like in time they actually create something that is truly them. But for the most part, I feel like they all pick like foxes, huskies, or some sort of cat. Yeah. And there's right nothing wrong the with that. It gives you an easy, no. familiar animal to fill in. Uh, and, to it, you know, when you're new and you're not used to creating <laughs> characters and whatnot, that's like the easiest thing. Like, what was your first animal that you picked? Was it a canine? I mm -hmm. bet you it was. It was. It was actually a husky. <laughs> Mine was it a wolf, was, so hey. It, it was a husky wolf is what it was. So I guess it's one and the same because they're pretty much from the same family. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was, he was a space husky. And so he was cybernetic. It was kind of cool. But um, that's just like the first thing I initially picked. And then eventually I kind of grew it into something else. I grew into what he is today, which is completely opposite from what he started at. He started as a husky, slowly became a hybrid, and then that hybrid turned into like a specific species of <laughs> You're like an anamorph species. book. Yeah. <laughs> much. And now I'm that that one thing. So if you like you look at my character now and you look at it what it was before, you're just like how? How did you? <laughs> how? And we'll explain it later how we've done that. But um, we have a, a couple of different things to kind of cover as far as personas go. There are, you know, types of personas, fads. Oh, there are so many types of personas. What personas can do for you in mm -hmm. the fandom, both in and out of the fandom. A lot of different ways that personas kind of like are the number one thing you kind of go for when you hit the fandom. Cause it is basically your representation in the fandom essentially. So yeah. it's, it's kind of like your avatar, like on Facebook or anywhere else. It's I mean, your representation. Yeah. Persona is literally a play on words of persona. So yeah, it's just a furry version of it. I just, I'm blowing out a candle cause it's running out of wax. There we go. <laughs> oh, okay. good. Now my mic now smells like, what is the flavor on here? Vanilla Bean Noel from Bath and Body Works. This is not sponsored. Um, neither, and it never will be. <laughs> so, okay. So we're, do we should just start off with um, types of personas? Yeah, I think so. Because that's, I don't know. It just seems like the right place to start. It kind of does. I mean, it's like um, creating a persona is like your rite of passage into the furry fandom. Everyone creates one, and how you do it is depending on your influence. Um, I can't say, I honestly cannot say 100%. There is an actual persona that is 100% original from not being inspired by something they've seen in the fandom. 
it just doesn't exist it's impossible yeah i mean and and inspiration is important you know like we said earlier most people start with like a cat or dog or a fox and then eventually they morph it into their own like individual character that seems to be a bit more fitting to them and that's that can be influenced by other people's personas as well thanks yeah thank you Um, also pulling up our emails that we've gotten in from a few people out there for sonas too we'll pull those up later um all right so a representation of who you are or a representation of you as you are kind of explain that yeah so we have let's see about maybe six types of personas i could find in my in my brain hole and one of the first ones i could think of is your persona just being a representation of you just as you uh no real like changes to personality or appearance besides the fact that you're an animal but <laughs> so like if you're a short person with glasses and you're anxious you might oh, yeah. draw like i don't know a mouse persona that's short with glasses and has your same hair or whatever you know something like that so it's just your persona is you just as an animal that's one type of persona that i've seen um, what about a persona of someone who's shy and is it just, is that all emotions? Is that still playing to the first one? I mean, it could be twisted into anything. Uh, so the second one, let's say if it's a, rep- a representation of what you would like to be, let's take the same person who is shy, short, and wears glasses. If this person wants to be tall, muscular, and confident, then maybe their persona could be, uh, a werewolf that that is just like really strong and and confident and has like a chain collar or whatever so that person in real life might not look like that but if they want to be something they're not then their persona might reflect that instead of who they actually are in real life what's about the next one there's different ways we can take this the next type of persona is a representation of you but personified So just the definition of a character in general, not even just a persona, just a character. Characters in cartoons and artwork tend to be personified a lot. Because if they weren't, then the shows wouldn't be as funny or as entertaining. So if you want a persona that fits that cartoon aspect a lot more, then you might make your persona still you, but extremely personified. So let's say, I don't know, you're just a a dude that likes to go to the gym and and cook. This is a weird combination, but let's say you're that. You might be like an extremely outlandishly buff coyote that wears an apron to the gym and lifts hams. You know, I don't know. It's you but personified to the extreme. Also, something to kind of keep in mind too, a representation of you but personified I bet something you probably have not thought of. I think of it every time I see it because I've noticed it. Every Disney movie that's made, every animation that's made, the person that plays that animation, parts of their face and personality are put into that character. So if oh, you were to shoot, do, yeah. if you were to do a side by side of the person who plays that character, you could easily point out traits of them, be like oh, their eyes, and oh, I could totally see that, like their facial structure crazy how that works but it's kind of cool to think about it at the same time oh you're right yeah, yeah you're right when i think about it like think of like eddie murphy and then think of the donkey from shrek boom yeah pretty <laughs> self-explanatory right there so it's actually I like love, it was, it, i love it, shrek it's such a good movie <laughs> the second one was the best i think I never watched the oh, third one all right and 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 some people might want like all three of these things um, but they don't feel comfortable mixing them up anyway. So some people actually have separate personas, like different ones, uh, that can represent different parts of you separately. So, like, if you're confident, but you like to play video games, and you also, I don't know, I'm trying to think of a bunch of random things, but some people will have different personas like what my this persona represents my confidence and this persona represents my intelligence and this persona represents my love for reading i don't know something like that so let's say someone has three or four personas 
all of them represent aspects of that person, but they're not combined. <clears throat> right. They're just like, yeah. um, like some people don't want to have all in one. Some people want to have a variety. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing. It just shows different parts of you that others don't necessarily get to see. And it's kind of neat. Um, let's see. There are a representation of our interests. This one I've seen, I don't see it as often. Um, but when I do, it's really interesting. Uh, if, if someone has a, a hyper interest or like a, an obsession with something, sometimes their persona will literally be a personification of the interests more so than of the person themselves. So like, I've seen this a lot when people have personas that are, um, animals that are from actual shows like Pokemon, for example, um, that's kind of a personification of your interest. Uh, so it can still represent you, but it's also a piece of your interest. Or if you really like technology or video games, I've seen some people have a, a cyber character that's like super steampunk, uh, just things like that. Can you think of any other examples? Well, so, okay. So it's not my current character anymore, but at one point in time, my hybrid did represent my um, online appearance as I had the on symbol and then I had the USB because I was always connected everywhere. So there was something like that. Um, and I was, that was just me. Cause I was always online doing, you know, social media, like crazy. That was me. That was me kind of like projecting my interests, but onto my first son, as you could see, no one really ever asked about the on symbol. I always had to explain it and I just eventually got rid of it. Cause no one really got it. So. <laughs> And now you see it everywhere. And now I see it everywhere. Well, I've seen a lot of fursuits are like that have like the on symbol on it. And I'm like, Ugh, I'm so glad I don't do that anymore. <laughs> it's, it's another overdone. <laughs> oh man, another uh, type of persona I've seen that goes with the interests is like I call them walking billboards. But if somebody is so obsessed or extremely like interested in um, a specific food or a specific video game, so like. Uh, for example, soda ruse, uh, that can, it, it's a representation of your interest in a soda or like, I remember monster roo. It was literally a green and black kangaroo with a monster logo on the back. I'm like, you're a walking billboard what about mango? for that product, it's like, it's <laughs> but like mango for eyes. It's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, and there's nothing wrong with that, That's but it's still considered one. can be like a personification of your interest. If you're just super into that drink. Yeah. I want my dog to be part coca-cola <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that it's actually really there's cool. nothing wrong with it no it's just a personification of one of your interests in fact there is an artist out there's several that do it but there was one that kind of started out doing it where they would actually take your persona and incorporate it into your favorite drink of choice and they would mm -hmm. make art based yeah. off of that i thought that was so cool i can't remember who it is there's one person that originally did it and then everyone kind of just got on the bandwagon and started doing it and then it's just you know there you go yeah, and it, but it lost its fun. <laughs> <laughs> I still have a lot of these can also just be applied to original characters and, and not necessarily personas. Um, and you know the difference between that, right? What? Uh, an original character and a persona. They're two different things. No, I've always considered them one and the same. No, they're two different things. So an original character is just a character that you made up uh, and like that you draw a lot or it's in a story of yours. Uh, while a, a fursona is something that represents you. So, for example, well, I have a character. They, it can be both, um, but typically both. if it's... So, suck it. <laughs> you can have both, yeah. But if it... Like, an, an OC could be a fursona. Or, wait, no. An OC can't be a fursona, but a fursona can be an OC. Okay. It's kind of like a square and a rectangle situation. I suppose, I, I guess in the time that we're in now... Space Dog Spiff would be an original character because he's no longer my fursona. Yes. Okay, there we go. That works. Exactly. So, like, Rory and Bean are my fursonas, but my other character, Crick, is not a fursona. He's just an original character. That's a cool character, too. You make some pretty <laughs> cool characters. But I like the style I'm that kidding. you do because your style's more realistic um to the way the person feels or to the way the person is and i kind of like that it's just a different way of doing it 
which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> and then, of course, you can mix all of these types up. There is no rules. Like, we may be listing off types of personas, but there can be an infinite amount of types. These are just the ones I could pick out of my brain. Uh, you can mix them up in any way or form, and it can still be valid as a persona. I think I can identify with four... Well, I guess the, the sixth one would be a mixture of four. My current persona <laughs> would be a representation of who I am, who I want to mm -hmm. be. It's personified of me. And it also represents multiple interests that I have in this world. You just don't like, I incorporate them into the art or into other things, but it's not like a separate part of space. It's part of space. So, Oh yeah. yeah. So you know, I mean, you could have all six if you really want to, um, or you could have one. There's no right or wrong on this one. Yeah, there's absolutely no right or wrong. Really, no right or wrong on any persona creation. No, there's not. You can't boss people around on their personas. There are those out there who think they can boss people around, but just remember. Oh yeah, it's a yeah. Some people are like, you can't have a fox persona. That's too cliche. And I say. Shut the fuck up. Let people draw what they want. <laughs> and the crazy thing, too, is like, um, I know some people that really like uh, Fursona or like a fursuit character or Fursona and they draw inspiration from it. But then that one person will get so offended because your design is too similar to their design. And then it, all hell breaks loose. And then you got like trolls. And it's just like, good Lord, can't people just be inspired by something? That should be an honor. Like, I would be honored if someone stole my fursona and then did oh something my gosh. with it. Please, I want to <laughs> see it. Like you know, that would be that's like the, I don't know about that one, Chief. Oh, come on, think about it. It's like the highest honor. If I saw some sort of like some people, some people see it that way, but others don't. I think I find it as like a form of flattery. It's like you're so low that you have to copy something. I feel, I feel, <laughs> wow, so good <laughs> that i've done better there, than there's you. two there's two sides to that one like if somebody draws inspiration but it's still obviously a second like a separate character then you know getting on your high horse and trying to boss somebody around when it's not like a carbon copy or if it's not too similar then it's like you can't copyright an aesthetic for example or you can't copyright a color palette like i've seen people get angry it's like your persona is a purple and white husky you're stealing my persona and i'm like uh okay first of all honey <laughs> you can't copyright the color palette of purple and white if if you have no unique markings and you're just have normal husky markings and i'm sorry you can't argue with people if they also have a purple and white husky but if you have a purple and white husky with like i don't know rainbow toes and somebody else does that too then then i can kind of see that where you'd get angry but at the same but. time there could be tons of different personas out there with rainbow toes you can't just you can't uh you can't copyright it. that can't. Kind except of there is only one person that has successfully copyrighted a first well it's i don't even know if it's a persona. is it considered a character what are you talking about dutch angel dragons that's a species it's a closed oh, species, species. Okay. no it's an open species i'm sorry N no, you're right. You're right. It's open because if it was closed, it wouldn't be up to the public. That one yeah. actually has copyrights to it. I'm not quite sure as to what, but I'm not going to go into details. You can go Google it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that whole community is something else. I'll just say that. <laughs> um, so while we're on that topic, let's let's talk about some persona fads. Yeah, there are tons of them out there. Tons. Oh Good my Lord. goodness! I remember er, in the early 2000s. Um, two really popular things to do with a persona were sparkle dogs, which most people should know what those are. They're basically canine characters that are just so outlandishly colored. Like my my persona has ten different colors on uh, it and fifteen markings that you have to get exactly right, and it has four sets of wings and <laughs> like that kind of thing. Those, That's why they're called sparkle dogs because they're so intense. Those are the people you give participation awards to. <laughs> and then what and these can go hand in hand with sparkle dogs but also edgy characters um sparkle dogs tend to be edgy but edgy characters don't tend to be sparkle my dogs God, like I can't... my original fursona was edgy as crap like you got your... like, she had emo hair yes. and trip pants yes. and 
and gauges and like and liked to rave like that toxic kind of thing. colors bright colors yeah light raver like just totally and then colors that just don't go together at all in designs and just oh, like yeah. you know i'm totally gothic and then of course you know you find out on the other end it's just some like really bubbly girl it's like what is wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> you get some of those i i don't even know if it's really edgy characters they're just like um i would say edgy forward slash cringe characters edgy on purpose yeah, it's just uh <laughs> i mean it, there's nothing wrong with having edgy characters if you like them it's just it is a fad that i observed early in the furry fandom and i think it is still a fad with younger furries particularly um like typically when i when i see like an 11 or 12 year old furry on the internet like they're like oh yeah my fursona's named demon wolf 85 and like and it's a it's a red and black wolf with with highlights in their hair and like it's like something like that you well know you have to I mean? also think of too but, like when you, when you think of this like if you're a younger furry your imagination is there but your like capacity to think of additional things isn't all there and so like color yeah, theory it's kind of like <laughs> between that age of like 11 to 15 or 16 is what i call a, the rebellion stage so that's where yeah. you get most of your characters that's, everybody gets every that. once in a while you'll get some of those people that are you know they're like 13 year olds and they have it they have it and you're just like Oh, I know I did. My God, this person is amazing. They're mature, but they have it. Like, that is amazing. You still, <laughs> and if I find people like that, I'm just like, oh, yes. You're going to be a. Oh, yeah. I've seen adults with edgy characters, and I'm oh. just like, that's, I mean, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's, it's you, you. You do what you want, but it's not yeah, my you thing. You do you. You do you. Well, it's almost like, um, it's like when I don't shun fursuits whatsoever. If you've made your own fursuit, you know it's not easy to do. And I've seen some, like, really outlandish ones. I've seen some homemaker, not-so-great-looking ones. But I'm not going to go to that person and say, you have a sucky fursuit. I've seen people bully it, and I think it's unnecessary. But, you know, you do you. If that works for you, it works for you. If your fursona is to be edgy at that time, awesome. Rock it. It's meant, it's to, meant be. to be. Rocket. Exactly. Um, there's also like uh, besides because I, I I know there's a few others out there, but you gotta also admit there's like the customizable ones. You got like the ones that have wheels. It's a bunch of wheelie furries that put wheels. They put what? yeah. So, um, Dory started oh, it. Oh, like train furries. No, and no, stuff? Dory started it, putting wheels in your fursuit paws, and then oh, heelys. Yeah, heelys. And then people started doing, you know, like, um, going along with the sparkle dogs. Now you have people with the technology that we have now, I would say a good handful of furries and fursonas out there and fursuiters have some sort of LED tech in it. Yeah, that's common. Yeah. So you have like the, the LED, you have the people that build speakers into their fursuits, which I don't really get because it doesn't sound that great, to be honest. <laughs> I, I get it for... um performance like beauty of the base does a great job that's with the performance only, of it because they well, also talk that's through the it. only person that can pull that off there are some there's some really cool like rad fursuits which that is a totally different topic that almost requires more of a visual aid because there are some rad ones out there like animatronic rad oh gosh yeah so good um and then you have your popular species <laughs> you have your your huskies and your foxes those have been like the staple of starter fursonas mm -hmm. um so like and they they range you have like gray fox red fox black fox white fox um like felix my husband he's a gray fox it's just very standard he has a couple of markings but they're not too like i've actually gotten a few people mix up i've seen a couple of like fursonas and i'm like that's you and he's like no that's someone else and i'm like no that's you <laughs> <It's> so, <laughs> because it looks so similar. yeah i've seen that too <laughs> i try to be a little different because if if you have a fursona that's literally just an animal with no like custom markings or anything which is fine yeah, a lot of people do that um but it, you can get people mixed up from it <laughs> um and then you have huskies you got tons of you got like 
Siberian Huskies, regular Huskies, Husky Wolves, Husky uh, Combos. I mean, there is just like tons of those. And those are probably the most commonly picked ones first just because they're easily customizable. Yeah, and it, it's easy to put in your yeah. brain. And a lot of people just relate to dogs, which is, I think that's why canines are so popular. And and there's nothing wrong with that because they're just, you can relate to a dog so Easily. well. And, like, you're around dogs. Dogs are a man best friend. Like, they're so f- fun. Why wouldn't you want to be a dog? Heck, today at work, I was talking with a client, and I turned around, and one of our co-workers had stopped and picked up her dog and come back to work baby puppy it was like a baby like chocolate kind of ashy color lab oh my god mm-hmm. i just like hugged that thing and i'm like oh my god you make me so happy right now like how could you not like that that's totally besides the point but i'm just saying like people love dogs <laughs> you don't see people bringing cats to work those things are gonna rip up the walls and they're gonna destroy things god there's a lot <laughs> Fire engine speak. Did you just hiss? Is that what no, that was? I'm shushing the ambulances and the fire trucks outside. Oh, it sounded like you were talking about cats and then you went. No, <laughs> <laughs> I can see. I can see why. <laughs> no, I'm trying to hush them. It's like, hey, I'm trying to record here. Tone it down. Stop saving lives. Yeah, I'm recording. I'll save lives later. Anyways. <laughs> um, and then there's the uh, the more newer popular species i've noticed i've considered circles to be popping up just like um oh otters i didn't even think about it otters are like otters otters are huge right now otters circles dutch angel dragons enough said about that one um there are let's see there's no i haven't seen very many bears a lot of no bears aren't very popular even though we're both bears. We're both bears. Yeah, bears aren't the most popular. I don't get why. They're so cute and cuddly. Um, and you can do so many things with it. They look adorable. But um, I've noticed circles are huge. Everyone seems to be like, if they're not a husky at this point, you're a circle. I don't really get the point. I don't get where a circle even... I know it's Japanese or Asian. That's for sure. The, your origin on that. They just look weird. It just they it? look like, a, I know- like they're... Like a shark mated with the front of a speedboat. That's just, that is what a <laughs> circle looks like. I can't really, and then their feet. Their feet look like weird. I just see their feet and I'm like, no. Like, I'm not. Circles are, um, are a, an open species that a furry made. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> there you go. They're not like from from any Asian culture. They're not like dragons or anything. Um, they're a real. They're a, I forget the name of the person who made them. Oops, but okay. <laughs> they are a real. They are a real thing. Who made the circle? I'm asking Google now. They're like an. I think they're an alien species, actually. Um. Oh yeah. So a circle is a race of shark-like headed people from the world of a word I can't pronounce. They are living in the planet Tau for now, although they're just an Yeah, see, they're aliens. Okay, from the planet Eltis. Mm. And there's two types, I think, northern and southern or yeah. something like that. They're, and those are, those are kind of interesting. And then you get the, um, oh, oh, okay, we can't, like, we can't skip over um, those unique characters where you have airplane meets furry. Oh, yeah, airplane furries. I don't, like, I. some of them pull it off really well. Like, fighter jets, those ones look rad. Mostly because they're incorporating some sort of dragon into it or some sort of reptile. And that would work real, really, really well. But then when you have things like a husky plane, I've seen it. It's, it's just not pretty. But I'm not going to judge. I just, it's not my thing. Um, I've seen some that are heck of cute. Some of them, but not all of them. Like, I used to follow this artist that had like a train species. God, I should probably find them, but they had like they had like wheel fingers or something, and they were like giant snake worm looking things. I don't know. They were pretty cool though. The uh, the... they always did traditional art on like tone colored paper. 
You know, I guess I could say at one point my furry, my persona might have been a protogen. Now, because I'm looking at protogens right now. Protogens, another one. Those ones are cool. Those are like, <laughs> those are like personas ahead of our time. Um, and there's there's actually, yeah. uh whenever we talk about fursuits and we do like the visual adaptations and stuff, um, there is a really good fursuit maker who custom designs LED helmets in a protogen face and it is just that is the c- space honey that's the creator of protogens oh. well i'm i'm practicing. yeah he makes the masks well too. whatever they're super awesome and i wish i was i <laughs> wish i was one of them. um <laughs> they're super cool i got protogen man it's like tron that's like full-on tron and i'm all about tron so you kind of have those like the more popular species most people will jump on the bandwagon for that Typically with Sergals, I've only seen Sergals that are really tall people. I have a friend who's a Sergal and he's really small and I think it's kind of weird, but whatever. It's all good. It's just it, it, the the profile type of Sergals usually are taller people, as I've seen. Yeah, and I've there's noticed that. There's that Sergal. I don't know what his name is, uh, but he's like super popular. Um. All right. And then uh, you take away with the next next area. The next area, okay. So multiple personas, which is something we talked about earlier with having like your interests. Usually if your persona is a personification of um, different aspects of you, then a lot of people have separate personas for that. So they'll have like three or four to represent three or four versions of themselves. But some people just have multiple personas because they feel like they can't, make a cohesive character with all of them in it, I guess. I don't know. What do you, what do you think about multiple personas? Um, cause I know it is kind of controversial. In okay. A way. So one, I guess one. Okay. Adaptation of multiple personas would be the Crayola for suitors. That would be the <laughs> only, like the only, ex- like, well, because they're different colors, but they're all this, they're they're all like different personas, but they're just different colors. Um, there are I've seen people split out their personas depending on their personality. Is that where we're going at? So you have like mm-hmm. someone who's sad, yeah. you have someone who's happy, you have someone who's angry, and that's that's fine. I just kind of think it's almost like split personality. No, because that's actually what I want to do. So I guess that would work. Um I've seen people do it, but it gets confusing because then it's like, which persona are you today? Kind of like, which pronoun am I supposed to call you this morning? Kind of a thing. It gets it gets a little <laughs> confusing. As long as you don't have a ton of them, I think it's fine. It's just when they get past like three multiple like personas and you're just like having all of these different ones, it's like, how do you represent yourself through multiple people? Like it's just, that does not make sense. <laughs> Because it's impossible for one to do that. I, f- I feel I'm I'm kind of the similar in a similar opinion. I think it's great to have multiple personas. If that works for you, then that's awesome. But as soon as you have like five plus, uh, it starts to get kind of confusing to me. Like it it starts to be like, are you um are you actually representing yourself, or are you just so attached to your OCs that you want to call them a persona? Because there's no shame in having original characters, but some people seem to feel like each original character they have has to be a persona, when that's not necessarily the case. Um, so I, I think it's fine. Do what you want. Uh, but to me, it starts to get... Like, the meaning of a persona starts to get diluted when you start to have more than, like, five of them, for yeah. example. Because a persona seems like a really special thing to me, and if you have a horde of them, then it seems like the specialness starts to go away. I know Deer away. Dog has a couple of personas, but hers kind of works. Because like one's like more professional, one's kind of goofy, one's kind of just a little bit of both, and that works. Oh yeah, see that's personifying different yeah, aspects of you fine. in different but characters. But it's just usually like. I'm I'm gonna be a cat today, and then tomorrow it's gonna be a dog, and I have all these different. I just, I just can't. No, I just can't. At most, I think I've ever had, and adoptables don't count. Um, one, 
four. Because you got to remember, OCs and personas are different. You can have like a hundred OCs, and I think that's I totally total. cool. But when you have a hundred personas, it's like, are they really gone like a persona? total of four? <laughs> so like, what I first started off was mm-hmm. what I hybrided it into, so then it became two things, and then what it is now. So I guess like in in total, I've gone through mm-hmm. four personas. But it was more or less an evolutionary process, not just randomly selected. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can, your fursona can change. And sometimes if your fursona changes enough, your old version of it can become an OC. Uh, I've seen that before. Um, but I th- multiple personas is a great way to to focus different aspects of yourself into different characters. But I don't know, just... If you have so many of them, it just makes right. it feel less special. And I get that. Um, so, okay. So, with all of this being said, how can personas help you in the fandom, specifically? Um, some people use it as a way, like I, we've said before, as a representation of themselves in the fandom. My character is very much a representation of myself in the fandom. I'll explain how that works um, last, or in the end. But, um... Like, everybody in the furry fandom seems to have a fursona, but they can they can help people in multiple ways um, in the fandom and outside of it. Uh, like, for example, you can have a fursona that helps you visualize your own personal goals, like goals that you want to reach. For example, if you're a shy person, but your fursona is confident... Maybe that's your way of remembering, oh, I have a goal of being more confident, and it keeps reminding you to keep working on that. Uh, and with other... What are some other goals? I don't know. What What do you think? How does a well, persona okay, help Well, okay, so you think about it this way, like, um, specifically those who have disabilities. A persona for someone like that can be the difference between life or death. Um, for them, it's, it's more or less like... Um, Let's say you're wheelchair bound. Maybe you, and your fursona doesn't want to be, but uh, maybe you create your fursona to be this thing that you want it to be. And it's everything you aspire. And that's who you are. And that keeps you going. Um, some people do, I'm trying to think here. I guess, okay, for instance, my fursona. My fursona helps me kind of maintain a balance in myself. Um, both online and offline. I do that on purpose because I want myself to be as much as represented online as you would if you met me in person. I wanted to be that real. So for me, my persona, um, my personal goals are very much my actual goals in life. And so I feel like they kind of interact and work out some people um i don't know if you know it'd be really interesting for those who are like you know overweight or super skinny i wonder if people create personas to be something that they're not they wish they were but how how many of those actually achieve their goal like do you think those who are bigger who have skinnier personas actually end up being skinnier or do you think they're ashamed by their own persona and they kind of keep it that know. way? Like they personify something they want to be. I don't know. I guess that's an individual basis because I know when we talk about our own personas, I'm going to be linking like weight to like, it okay. as well. So personas can help with, I guess, seeing a, a side of you that you maybe didn't see. But I can almost see something as well. And I just came upon it. I don't want it to be a negative thing, but kind of point it out there. Sometimes a persona can be something that you don't want, like you wish you weren't. So I am overweight. My character used to be skinny, but it's not anymore. He's kind of just pudgy, which is perfect. It's who he is. But I'll be honest, there are some times where I want to create space where he's more fit. I don't do it, though, because then I wouldn't I would be going against everything that I am being as much as I am online. And in person, if I create something that's not me, what's the point? That's my thinking of how I do it. It's different for others. But I kind of wonder if some people create these personas of themselves that they wish they were, but they're not. And I'm sure they do. I've seen people do that. 
Yeah, I've seen people do that. And even if it's if it's something they want to be, but it's something they're not, then that's how when it comes to like what saying it's visualizing your personal goals. Um, let's say, yeah, for example, if you're shy, but your persona is outgoing, um, maybe over time throughout the furry fandom, as you're drawing this character, getting art of this character, um, it's kind of encouraging you to work on being outgoing as well, which I've seen work. That's worked with me. That's something that I've done personally. So it can either, it, it can work with you um, on trying to improve the things that you want to, or it can work with you to help you feel okay about the things of yourself that are you know, true that you might not I like. I might actually, for the new year, just because everyone likes to do like weight loss plans for the new year, I might actually create a guideline of where I am now with my weight and have a reflection of that as my fursona. And in time as I lose weight, so will my fursona. And it'll kind of like, it'd be like yeah, a, like a, that'd be it's cool. like someone checking in on me, but even though it's just me, it'd be kind of cool to see that. Ooh. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. You're going to do it. That too. would be cool. I'll pay you to do it. <laughs> you're going to do the art for it. <laughs> I'll do it. Um, but on, let's go on the opposite side of that, how a persona can help. Um, if on one hand, it helps you visualize your personal goals that you're working for, like physically, it can also help accept, it can help a person accept and Ooh. embrace their insecurities. So on the other hand of that, let's say you are overweight. Well, maybe you'll make your persona overweight as well, but you still love that persona. You might still like think your persona is attractive regardless of their weight. And maybe it'll help you feel more confident about yourself in real life because your persona is also like appealing regardless of whatever insecurities you've projected onto them. I know one good example of this. I've talked to um, Face Rot and and uh, no. I, I don't know if you know no, who that artist no. is. Do you? No, you don't? Their art in their fursuits is like... They look kind of mangy, but on purpose. Um, all the characters that he has, like his persona to molt, has pimples and like a lot of um, like facial. What's it called? I won't call it disformities because a lot of people oh, have yes. it, but just like so pimples and zits and stuff like that, scars. And um, I remember talking to him in the headless lounge at FWA, and um, he and my fiance were talking, and they were talking about how his persona has pimples and stuff and now he loves like um, pimples and scars and he thinks they're fascinating whereas in the past they were insecurities so it's like the flip side um, you might have something you feel insecure about on yourself but then over time if you keep putting it on your persona and drawing it on okay. your characters okay you might i can identify with it. that like i don't ever want to be skinny yeah i like being plump there's just something about it like I've had man boobs. Mostly, they look like women's boobs, pretty much. They're different from man boobs. They're just, they're like an in between. But I've I've loved to play with them so much, and I've learned to do it that it's become a part of me. If I don't <laughs> play with my boobs at some point in a conversation, there's something wrong. But I've embraced it, and so I don't think like I, I want to become like more fit, but I still want my chub because that's me. That's who I am as a person. If I was skinny, good lord, oh yeah, I know what's gonna happen? world might explode <laughs> and and it can help like that kind of aspect if it's helping you embrace your insecurities and that also is a way that can help people cope with stress because insecurities oh, yeah. definitely cause stress um, for now, sure now the cool thing about personas in general is those who don't necessarily identify with either male or female but kind of a little bit of gender fluidity fluidity there you go that's the word um, there are personas out there, there that <laughs> don't have any sort of way for you to determine if they're female or male. That might work really well. Yeah, exactly. Um, one yeah, species gender. specific, and we talked about it earlier, are Dutch on dragons. They are neither. Yeah, they're basically. Yeah, they can null. be whatever you want them to be, but for the most part, they are just that. They're just there, and so. Like, they can have gender, but they don't have sex. So they can go by male, female, they, them, whatever pronouns, because gender is, like, in between your ears, whereas sex is in between your legs. So they don't have any genitals. They're null. And it's interesting. But they can still have gender. It's kind of like, and that might be a perfect kind of, like, a route for someone who doesn't really fall 
in one or the other, but they're both. So that's something that's perfectly good for them. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And another thing is with, with personas, they can really help um, transgendered people with dif dysphoria. It can help people cope with their dysphoria. So l let's say like you're a trans man and your persona is it kind of personifies like your goals or who you feel like you are or it is who you are just and it can help you fight with that kind of dysphoria because i know i have um a handful of transgendered friends and i know personas have helped them a lot over the years figure out who they are and um and just how they and that's identify that's like and that's like where that. it can be life saving for some, because it's that one aspect definitely that they can feel confident in that no one else can judge them for. It's kind of like, it's like a neat little scapegoat of like its own little universe. It's, it's neat. Um, and the last thing that like personas can really help with is to contribute to a creative outlet, whether that's for art or maybe that's to help cope with stress, anxiety, depression, all of those different things, personas can really, can really do a lot of great things. They can make you into something you probably never thought you were ever. I like, for instance, never assumed that I would ever be in some sort of broadcasting whatsoever. Obviously that changed. I am now in broadcasting, but like when I first created my persona, it's not how <laughs> I appeared it to be. Now it's kind of who I am and my persona kind of embraces it. And so does their mascot too our mascot's so cute <laughs> blue is adorable <laughs> blue um, is cute yeah it really it's, is like we have a mascot we, and that's kind of kind of something we've created <laughs> over the past few years like for media's mascot is broadcast which is a touch angel dragon that was made by telephone so and that was cool that's something that represents um our our podcast or our, our, our show that we did before our podcast now has blue blue you you created blue why don't you tell them what blue is blue is a just a labrador retriever and his name and his design is inspired by the a brand of microphone yeah. which is just blue that's just it <laughs> And I was like, well, he, the the logo is this dog chewing on a microphone. I'm like, the, well, it has to be blue. The aspects of that particular, is it a fursona? Would that be considered a fursona of our podcast? Something that represents us? Um, I, you could you call know, it a mascot. I like calling I call it, it that, fursona, sure. But one thing that I thought was really neat, I didn't ask Bean to do this. She just did it. She actually incorporated colors of for media yes. into straight from the muzzle so there are aspects of what we created that are now mm -hmm. available in what we do now and i think that's important because it shows a little bit of our culture and we're not afraid to mix it into something new and i think i like that it's a piece that's kind of like it's paying respect to something we created and it's now going to kind of be with us but it's not a major part it's now just like a part of our history which is really cool i like that i thought that was really like a nice touch thank you by the way <laughs> good i'm glad you liked that. um <clears throat> oh man so what about what about our own personas i think that'll be interesting to connect everything we just talked about like what what type of persona is yours how does it help you, you uh things like that so when i first started in the fandom yeah, sure. i created a cybernetic husky wolf his name was space dog spiff his I drew inspiration from one of my favorite comics, Calvin and Hobbes. And one of the things that Calvin was is he would be like the space cadet and his name was Spaceman Spiff. And so in my family, I was always called Spiff. So I kind of took my favorite comic and I took a, a kind of a nickname that my family gave me and I threw it onto the most common thing I could find, which was, at that time was Husky Wolves. And I created a cybernetic Husky Wolf. He was kind of like this space kind of frontier guy, had all the cutting edge technology, kind of was his own freelancer. Um, he had like a symbol. He had like an on symbol in the back, but it wasn't too prominent. And that was who I was. Something I kind of took that was a part of me, but something that I kind of wanted to be because 
I was starting to kind of appreciate sci-fi and I really was kind of getting into it at that time. But over time, um, space started to evolve. I felt that the space dog um, could become something better. So I started incorporating one of my other favorite animals, which is now my favorite animal, which was a bear, a polar bear. So space became a hybrid of a polar bear meets a husky wolf. Um, the tail at the end kind of curved up a little bit. It's just like a little flab of a tail. And parts of the husky, you could see parts of the husky was in <laughs> the lower region. So like the legs and the feet. And then parts of the bear were more prominent in the upper region. So like the arms and the chest and that nature. The head was a little bit, it was kind of, it was, yeah, it was a little bit of both. And it was a weird. Of both. Yeah. You had more of like it a was husky a really nose interesting hybrid. Kind of that was thing. where I kind of was in the fur media phase, and um, over time, I think it was within the last year or two is when I decided that I want to just be a polar bear, but I want to be my own bear. So polar bears are typically white, but that's actually not their main color of skin. You know that, right? They're actually. Their skin is black, but they just, it's just mm -hmm. the way yeah, their the skin is black. off of it. So my character, my persona, Space Bear Sparks, is what I eventually turned him into, became more of a black kind of a bear. And he's still a polar bear, so he still wears, like, sweater vests and all these fun little things that I, like, incorporate. It's, I mean, sweater vests don't really incorporate to <laughs> Antarctica, but it keeps him warm. It's, a, a, the, the sweater vest <laughs> is something that I've always <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's a, a smile and a nod. I've always worn a sweater vest. I wear them when I go to conventions. It's an argyle print, and it's just something that represents me. And I try to represent that as much as possible. Now he's this, you know, cute little cuddly bear. Um, depends on how I draw or how I have him done. He can either be like super cute and cuddly. He can be really fierce. I've seen feral versions of my character drawn. I really liked it. Um, and that's who I am today. It went from something that was experimental that became a hybrid because I wanted to change myself a little bit. And now it's something that represents me who I am. So my weight and my persona is very much the same. They're, they're both chubby. And there are no indistinct markings on them anymore. There are no like on symbols or USB symbols because I don't want to be labeled as something like that. I just want to be, I want to be me. He wears like these little glasses and um, there's always going to be a mischievousness <laughs> of space himself, but there's different aspects of him. He's cute. He's handsome. He's, you know, witty. He's understanding. He listens. He's there for you. He's everything that I am now. And maybe just a little bit more. And that's how I want him to be. And that's my rule. My rule is exactly yeah. as I've said. My persona has to represent me. Because if I ever meet people in person, I want them to be able to know, oh, that's space. Not just because of his voice, but because he totally represents his himself online as he does in person. It makes it a little bit easier too. So it's not like, oh, you're that super bright thing and you are some lanky you know skinny astrophysicist <laughs> totally didn't see that one coming you know <laughs> i want to be i want you people to be like okay God. that is space i could tell that space <laughs> i know that space that's how i represent myself in the fandom i am who i am online and in person 100 percent, and that's how he is today and i think i'll keep him like that i probably won't move change him at all he'll probably just stay the way he is because i like that Thanks. He's cute and cuddly. I like your fursona. Felix even knitted a he knitted a fursona <laughs> of me. So him, no, him I, and I, yeah, we have these little like crocheted animals. So really? whenever I go travel, I take his crocheted animal with me. So I always have Felix with me, regardless of where I'm at. Because you know, when I travel alone, I mm. I it's lonely. So I always try to take something like that with me. Oh, I do the same thing or with a stuffed like animal that, that my fiance gave me. Queen and I shoved a giant 
dildo dick on the wall and made space write it. I've got pictures of that if you ever want to see it. Oh, <laughs> I will. Oh, please <laughs> send that awesome. to me. <laughs> it's so great. <laughs> you were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay at fwa last year all of us ended up buying something from the adult oh room God. and we were like throwing them at the window God. to see if we could get them all to stick like darts I... <laughs> and it worked should, like, except for mine it get, was too like, big sort of, it just like, kind of went and 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 fell. Like, up on the end of it so it becomes like a grappling hook <laughs> <gasps> oh my gosh! A grappling a cock. I'm, I'm messaging Felix that right now. <laughs> not your first Good. One, your first one is actually quite unique. You have. Oh my gosh. Oh, I have. Oh, I have two. But I'll talk about Rory first, since I've had her for way longer. Um, so I've had Rory ever since I joined the fandom, which is when I was in late middle school. So I've been in it for a good eight years now, nine years, something like that. Uh, and she started off as an edgy wolf character, of course, because I was young and edgy. <laughs> she was a neon green, gray, and navy blue wolf. Um, she originally had wings, and she always had to wear a neon green and black striped scarf. And then as I went and went into high school, I changed her into being um, less vibrant, I guess. Like, instead of um, super dark gray fur, like it was almost black, I made it extremely light gray. And I lightened up the green and the blue on her a bit. And I changed Ooh. her from being just a wolf into being a wolf dragon. Because I was like, well, wolves are kind of just cliche and I want to be more unique. Little did my I know wolf dragons are also not that unique. <laughs> but again, really? I was really young and I was just like, I was I was grabbing for whatever I thought was popular and not what was me, you know. Uh, so once I hit college is when I actually changed my persona. So it took a good five years of having a persona that didn't really look or feel like me until I left high school and stopped worrying about what other people thought of me online and in person. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to change my persona to actually feel like me. And when I did that, I turned her into a parrot dog hybrid. So she is a, yeah, she is a Samoyed so dog. Cute. So it's those really big fluffy white dogs, you know, and she's mixed with a Kayik parrot, which is an orange, green, and white parrot with a really short, feathery tail. Uh, and those parrots are so funny. Um, so that that was her uh, final design. I tweaked some colors over the last year, but her design didn't change much at all. The only thing I changed was her nose color. It's not black anymore. It's like a, a maroonish purple, I guess. Uh, so that's Rory, and with her specifically, when I first made her in her edgy stage, uh, she was like a, a normal, like, body shape, like a, a standard thin female character, and I'm not a very thin person. Uh, I, I was thinner when I was younger, but I've definitely put on weight as I got older, um, and that's due to just... One, getting older, and two, I have type 1 diabetes and polycystic ovaries, which makes it very difficult to lose weight. And so my character was thin because I was starting to feel insecure, and I wanted her to be, like, like in my mind, what is supposed to be pretty. But as I went into college, I was like, well, I think I'm going to actually make her my weight. And then over the years of her design changes, I made her, like, bigger than me. So she's probably, say, double my chubby. size. Because I'm chubby, but she's a lot chubbier. Oh, I'm, my God. I'm old, more than 200 pounds. <laughs> no, this is something else. Yeah. <laughs> You've never seen a full body picture of me. Uh oh. <laughs> but what what happened was in... um. In late high school, when I was a senior and during my first semester of college, I actually had an eating disorder. And um, it, being at home was really hard for me. My father was, like, really religiously and emotionally, I guess, he was abusive. And so I had an eating disorder for a while because my, 
you know, being called like fat and telling somebody telling you like you shouldn't be eating, you should be fasting, stuff like that. Eventually, I developed just an eating disorder for about a year where I wouldn't eat for a while, days at a time, because I felt like that would help me lose weight. And it didn't. Um, even if you starve yourself, if you have the two diseases that I have, your body just doesn't want to shed weight. Uh, but as I went to college and I was away from home a bit more and I met more people that had more interests like in me than, uh, or similar interests as me, then I eventually, I started making my persona thicker than me and I still considered her really pretty and really attractive. And in turn, over the years, it made me a lot more confident and a lot more body positive. So a couple of years ago when I would starve myself, I don't do that anymore. I actually don't care about my weight. I can wear whatever I want and think I look fine. So it really helped me improve I, in that aspect. I, you know, don't care about my weight as much anymore. I I used to. And I weighed myself. I actually weighed myself this morning. And I'm just... I saw the scale and I'm like, it's Christmas. Don't worry about it. You will, you'll work on it later. But in reality, I don't think I want to. I think I want to just stay where I'm at. It's perfect. Who who are they to say that I am overweight? <laughs> I'm a tall guy. Have you seen me? <laughs> I could take you down. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you should just check your telegram. God. Because you're just going to be like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, no. Are you sending me these pictures? It's, it's, what is this? The, one, the first one's a penis oh my launcher. God. The second is a, one is actually is called a, a sexual launcher? assault rifle. It's just because okay, so it's funny because it's an assault I don't, rifle. Oh wow! But I okay. get like I don't like the. I mean, the name of it is awful, but the fact that it's God. like it has like a like a knife that's a dildo. Yeah, it's a play on words, and it launches dildos at you. How, could you it's be any more happier if I was shot? <laughs> If I was in a crowd, okay. If I was in a crowd and that was their anti-crowd <laughs> gun, and I just got shot in the head by a giant jelly dildo, I'd be like, <laughs> "What? Sweet, <laughs> sweet oh, free toy!" And you're like, go. That crap costs like eighty bucks. <laughs> Anyways, so much for uh, for a family friendly oh, show. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. That's not it's who we fine. are now. Um, <laughs> That's who we were, not who we are. <laughs> but that was Rory. And and still today, uh, she's still the same weight. She's like heavier than I am, but she's extremely confident. Like I have, I don't think I've ever drawn her in a negative scenario because she's just so happy. Um, she's so happy. Go lucky. She's so confident and so loving. Uh, she is everything that I aspire to be. And she is also all of my insecurities that have been personified to the point where I don't even find them as insecurities anymore. I find them as strengths, uh, w which was a really great way how my persona helped me, I guess, grow as a person and to improve my mental health. But now I have two personas. I made a new one just this year. I still use Rory as a persona, but since she is all my insecurities personified and just all the things I want to be and all my positive traits personified. I really wanted a persona that was just me, like nothing personified at all. Um, you know, like body type, the same as me, things like that. And I wanted her to be an animal that acted more like me in real life. Rory is a Samoyed and a parrot, which are two very hyper animals. I'm a pretty chill person in reality. I, pretty much leave a dent in my bed and do homework and draw like <laughs> so my my second persona that represents just me without any changes is a bear i chose a pizzly bear because i think they're really cute and that's literally the only reason and bears are one of my favorite animals so i was like well this fits also my fiance calls me mama bear all the time so i'm like oh this is perfect do you know how pizzlies happened uh you know the, like global warming fucked up the snow and now grizzly bears and polar bears are a little too close for comfort <laughs> yeah so if anyone didn't know like it was an accidental species they've just recently just it is in the past few years but what happened was is yeah global warming has been pushing um polar bears further and further inland so they actually were coming down into northern america so like canada and no one noticed that 
both the polar bear and grizzly bears mated and they actually created their own species. Now, granted, they're not the most, I don't think they're, <laughs> depends on which Pizzly bear you get as far as picture goes. Some of them can kind of look mean, but they're so cute though. Like the fact that they've been, they made it together and no one knew that. I, I didn't even know you could do that. So, I mean, I guess yeah, they're it's in the same family, so I it works, but that's so cool. They're so cute. I don't know for, if like, they can like, to come. I don't know if they're, if they're sterile or not. Like, cause you know how mules, they can't mate more mules. So I'm not sure if it's the same with Pizzly bears or not, but I just think they're neat. And I was like, I have to be a bear. This has to be a thing. They're one of my favorite animals. And it just feels like me. And so I made Bean. And her name actually comes from a pet name. Um, my fiance calls me Beans sometimes. like, Or I'll call her Pumpkin. I don't know why. Pumpkin. We just have really strange pet names. But she'll be like, hey, Beans. And I'm like, hi. So I'm like, okay, my first owner's name has to be Bean. It just sounds appropriate. It's cute. And it works. And even with, since she represents me just as I am with no changes... Um, she has a marking on her back that's not even, I guess it's not even considered a marking, but I have a tattoo on my back that is a sprig wreath with two parrot footprints in it. And I actually put that tattoo on my fursona. So whenever I get more tattoos, which I plan on having a lot of them, I will be putting them on my fursona as well, which I think will be really fun over the years. Whenever I get new tattoos, I'll just have to update her reference and it'll be really cool. I'll still always call you like Moths or Rory. Bean. I'll probably go like I usually go between the three of them when I'm talking to Felix. He knows who I'm talking about. Yeah, but... yeah. I've gone through three different names in our in our time knowing each other. I am so sorry. <laughs> I might still just call you Rory though because that's such a cool name. And Bean, Bean. I named Rory after a character in the Gilmore Girls. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that show. I love I've it a never lot. Seen it. <laughs> oh, Not man. my type, I guess. Um. No, it doesn't seem like a show we you would like. We did have two people email in to us. So if you guys ever want to email us about anything or show-related topics, please do so. You can do it by going to or emailing talktothemuzzle at gmail.com. One of the best things you came up on the whip. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> um, the first one that came in was from Oops. And Oops is on our team. She's one of our graphic artists. She's also got a spunky personality. Um, and she says, Hey y'all, here's my fursona. Oops. Oops has been in my fursona since 2012. In 2012, I was around 12 years old as well. So it's been interesting seeing how Oops has grown as a character of mine. However, truly Oops hasn't changed much since the first time I created her aside from her name change. Um, the design has barely changed, but the, like, I'll put um, links into their fur affinities so you guys can get, like, you can click on them and see them. But her character is so adorable. And if I were to put 3D glasses on, I'm pretty sure the character would pop out just because of the way the colors are laid over each other. Super rad. Oh, yeah. They do have, like, the, the yeah, 3D outline. Cool. Um, that would be kind of cool to see, like, 3D fursonas. Like, actual, like, old school huh. 3D. So, like, red and blue. That would be rad. Yeah. That Another would be one. Cool. Is this a friend of yours that emailed in? No, Muse I think it's just a fan. Avoid. So all of them, you can't see the art, but we will find a um, link to their art so you can see it. And let me go back into, I'm like literally clicking on this as we speak. Um, Mochi <laughs> is my personal persona. And is the closest to how I dress and act. Dongo or Dango is my boyfriend's Sona, and he is a sweetie. Um, what's really I, I kind of really like about these characters and these personas is the way that they're drawn. They're very different. Um, they're they're <laughs> they're they're kind of like chubby, but at the same time they're tall. And if the person is exactly how they're representative, oh my god, I want to meet them in person because their art is just awesome. <laughs> their mochi character is a Chow Chow, one of my favorite dogs on the planet, man. Chow Chows Aww. are the best because they got purple tongues. Um, but they're also super they're territorial. Super cute. So unless you graze them like in the community, they will bite people. So, <laughs> but they're pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I love their art. It's just. 
I love that. They're the kind of people that do artwork on notepads, like note paper. I love that kind of stuff. I see that. I just yeah. fall in love with it instantly. And that was our show, everybody. We really appreciate you tuning in to listening to us. I know this is what our like fourth episode now. Is it our fourth? Yeah. I think it's our fourth. Yeah, I think it's our fourth. So we're getting this ball rolling and it's been really fun. And we hope that you continue to listen to us and support us in the future. If you want, you can go over to our social media links and give us a follow. We really like interacting with everybody and trying to get other people on the show, whether it's like through reading your emails or actually, you know, getting you on the show, talking to us while recording, which would be super duper fun. So if you want to follow us on Facebook, we have a Facebook, we have a Twitter, and we also upload all of our podcast episodes onto Buzzsprout, YouTube, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, all that kind of stuff. Alexa. So, <laughs> yeah, and Amazon yeah, Alexa. Alexa. <laughs> we have Alexa. Exciting. <laughs> I saw that. I'm like, here's the, here's the interesting thing, though, before we cut out. Alexa literally draws their information from iTunes. So essentially, it's just iTunes. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, You can pretty much find us everywhere now, which is cool. Yeah. So if you want to support us further, go ahead and give us a like and a follow on all those other pages, and we'll go talk to you there. Other than that, folks, we'll see you guys next time. See you next time. Or not. <laughs> <laughs>